never done a podcast in my life. Really? This will be my first time doing a podcast. Let me show you how to do this. Well, what is this mic? This reminds me of these you These are cool. Last night. <laughs> wow. Did you really just say that? <laughs> They'll edit it out. That reminds me of you last night. I mean, you were just, <laughs> you were wanting to go for an hour. <laughs> no. I didn't have it in me. <laughs> I was trying, but. I give up. I had, the good thing is my, my hands are good for a long time, so. Okay. All right. <clears throat> That's for sure going in the show. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, my name is Gary J. White, the founder of Wicca Boyer, and I'm here with my lovely hostess with the most, is compadre and I, we partner. We haven't been in an actual podcast studio in a long time. No. We did. We used long to, time. We did the last, our first, our new first podcast at our home. Yeah. Well, how did that go down? Did you like that? Um, I thought it was good. The audio was a bit iffy. The audio was shitty. You know what? Let's we, call it what it was. But you know what's so funny is I showed up for a team meeting that I wasn't invited to. <laughs> and then here we're doing a podcast. And then I was like, let's do a podcast because it's in the same meeting room. So, so. here's the deal. I, uh, I'm going to give a shout out out to, uh, I, uh, to, this person will know who they are, but I'm not going to say their name. They had, uh, I, I just did a call today with a, a man, a young man, 27. I say young. I like that I'm 45 and I can call him a young man. You've been wanting to be 60 for your I'm like, listen, here, well, his own comments were, I'm closer, I, I'm actually close to your son's age at 22. I said, yeah, but you're established a much further down the path than my son right now. My son's 22, not even a prospect for a girlfriend. Well, and he's, he's 27, he's married, 22, and he's got going three on 17. kids. He is, he is. <laughs> he's getting it figured out, though. So, um, anyways, like, I had the conversation with this guy, and uh, he said that his marriage was in a frustrating place and there was they weren't gonna get divorced there was none of that going on but there was uh there was sex was not happening for a long time almost a year and they loved each other but there were just some discontent and frustration even when we were in like not a good space like i i don't think we would be married if we didn't have sex for a year i, I they were doing other things they just weren't they just weren't have sex anyways it was uh, here's the thing the reason i bring up though is that the solution to their problems was not go to sex therapy guess what it was what Listen to Date Your Wife, the podcast. No. Why do you think that we're able to give people that kind of healing? That's healing to get. To start having sex again, that's a big deal. <laughs> you know what? It's a big fucking deal to do that. You, I could, don't, you know, I, don't, I feel like we're just pretty real with things, maybe. I don't know. But I think we create opportunities for people to talk about things. Mm -hmm. So in the spirit of talking about things, let's talk about how your sex game is leveled up is that big what time. I was wondering why you wanted to talk Well, about I don't know, but you need to talk right into that this microphone. This mic, I'm telling you. No, you need to adjust. <laughs> it's not a limp dick. Here, hold on. You just adjust it right there. Hold. It's, See, okay. that works right there. Perfect. Okay, okay so uh, like, like, let's talk about your sex game in the last year and a half because your sex game has definitely gone through the roof. You've like gone you, through the roof. I have. I've shot through <laughs> the roof. Like, like, listen, you. Let's talk about it though, because you have. You went down a fitness thing, mm. and you started doing help. body. No, no, it didn't just little help. It's like it's like ever like the sexual monster that I've wanted to be dominated <laughs> oh by God. the the woman who tells me I conquered you, which is a statement that you used here about a month ago. We just ended up having sex, and I you swear were like, I didn't say I, you, you. Said I said I, I conquered own you. you. No, no, no. I said you I said, own said you. no, no. Own would be like nice. You said, I, I conquered Either way, you. I conquered and on you. <laughs> <laughs> you are welcome. <laughs> well, let's talk about it. Like, you, you took on fitness and it affected now, your sexuality. You know Why? What? I, you know what? I don't know. I think I, I used to be in this place where I was like, oh, I don't want to have sex with the lights on and this and that. But I don't think it was necessarily just about me. I, I, I don't think I liked having sex with you for a while. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how else to say it. And then, like, when I liked you and then I liked me and then I got really unfit, I was like, we should have sex all over with all the lights on all the time. Okay. So, <laughs> so we face two major issues. Issue number one is I don't want to have to look at you when I'm having sex I with you. I didn't want to be, I didn't want to be intimate with you uh, like do you know what i mean like yeah. there's like sex and then there's like intimate sex and i was like w like what's the difference between sex and intimate sex be well because I, I hate when people are like we you know we're intimate i'm like what <laughs> does that mean like what is it sometimes you just have sex and sometimes you have intimate sex so, okay what's the difference though you still haven't defined it um give me an example of what sex is that's not intimate i mean there was years where all we had was just sex and it was just like checking it off the list and it was like it was just did like, you ever like it during that time period? I did, but it wasn't intimate. Like, of course, like you I were mean, just going to get off, but it was like it wasn't. In, I could yeah, get off. This could be any guy. It, I mean, it was just like sex. Yeah, 
did did so you ever see is like you you cross the other line for mm. that other person and like it's fun did you ever i, I know this wasn't really a big thing for you was a vibrator ever a thing for you no no it never was a thing for you some women is a thing for some some guys is a thing married for. women yeah married I women feel like i have my own personal <laughs> yeah well i'm your own exactly did you hear that i have my own personal <laughs> vibrator see I that is the that. problem when you have sex without intimacy i'm a personal vibrator <laughs> <laughs> I see how this is working. Well, don't worry. The term uh, that I use for it on our side as a guy was vaginal masturbation, which was like when there's no intimacy. I just either. feel like I go into shut off mode. Like I don't even allow myself to have fun. Like so for me, and I don't know if any other women feel like this, like if I'm not connecting to you, like we'll have sex to have sex. But like I kind of like I hold my emotions and I hold my vulnerability. And that's what you hold the most. Yeah, your vulnerability. I was going to say, I don't, mm -hmm. I don't let myself even like enjoy it or have fun. It's just, it's just like, okay, get off, have fun, like have sex. Okay. So we had two things happen. Then. One, we had a change in how you were seeing me. So that was one thing. And the second one was a change in how you were seeing you. So when did you start seeing me differently to where you're like, Hey, we don't need two comforters. The windshields, the, the shades can be up. We can have sex with the lights on. I'm going to tease you and play the game. Like this happened a few years back. Um, I don't did this. I mean, this was happening a bit before the baby was born, but yeah. it's happening way more after the baby's born, which I think has to do with you seeing you. But let's come back to you seeing me. What changed? Um, I think I like I liked you again. It was so funny. We were so, we were filming a sales documentary at our home, and you weren't in the room because Jeremy was doing inter his magic. interviewing me, and he was just like asking we were just like talking about isla and all this stuff and i was like it's funny like when i got to this place i didn't want to be married to you and mm -hmm. that's why we had such a big gap we had like an eight-year gap and then it got to this place where i like i even feel like with ruby because and i know you've shared this so i can share it on a podcast but like that's when you, like we had some issues like when i was pregnant with ruby yeah that was when i cheated and yeah. I was like nine months pregnant. And I even think back to when I got pregnant with Ruby. Mm -hmm. It wasn't because I like wanted, I want, I just felt like I was like, oh, it's been that amount of time. It's time to have the next kid. And I don't even think I really were, was connecting with you when I got pregnant with Ruby. You yeah. know what I mean? And so. Um, Which is weird because I think back to that. Yeah. I yeah. But, but I remember what feeling my really point is either. like with Isla, it was definitely like. I got to this place where I'm like, I want to have your babies. Like, I that's when I knew I, mm -hmm. I that's when I knew yeah. I like wanted to be married. So I was like, I I want your babies in me. <laughs> well, we had two things happen. Number one, we we purchased a home, which we hadn't purchased a home in ten years. We'd just been leasing because I think both of us were like, you know, we, didn't we don't know, know if it's going to work we, yeah. out. And um, so we bought the home. Well, and I then remember we got, you were like, you were telling me you were committed. You're like, finally, like divorce was off the table, and you told me like, you're like, I'm committed. And that was like the last piece of the puzzle because you were like even backpedaling into buying our house be before we bought our house now. Yeah. And you were like melting down. And I was like, motherfucker, like you say you're committed. This is this is I know you're like, oh, you don't need a house and this and that. But then at the time you were talking about buying a Lambo and I was like, live in your fucking Lambo. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I remember that you were, you know, when I think back on it, it does make it a lot of sense. It doesn't seem like the smart. <laughs> no, it does make a lot of sense what you were saying. But at you the time, felt I didn't like really I was trying to it. control you, yeah. you and by like, I was like, are you serious? But to me, I was like, let me get this straight. You're going to go buy a half million dollar car, but you won't put a down payment on a home. I was like, I need you to look at your priorities here. But obviously we know how that went. We got the house. And then a year later, you were like, I'm getting my Lambo. And I yeah, like, we did. So we got the go. house in 2017. We bought it. That was a big shift. I got the Lambo, which was a big shift. Now but you're now you're like over the Lambo. I, you know, I really I drove the Lambo today. I like the Lambo. I just decided that I'd rather have a vehicle that I can put all of my kids in at once. I'm becoming that fucking you're, guy. You're so responsible. I mean, I'm I'm becoming that fucking guy. I'm like, what do you want? I want a really I nice want stability. SUV. I want <laughs> a nice home. I want comfortable I want a retirement shoes. plan. <laughs> I want. <laughs> I'm like, oh, so talk golf. dirty to me. I want talk a golf dirty on Tuesday me. with Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so like you, so you have a change. Alyssa, so you change the way you're looking at me, but then you have a, like a ma like, and sex definitely gets a lot better, a lot better. You're having more fun. I'm having more fun. <laughs> Somebody's having fun. <laughs> Both of us are having fun. But then, then the quantum game happens. You, you give can't birth. Even look at me straight I, right now. You I can't, can't because all I can think of is you <laughs> naked in like a thousand positions. Okay. So like, here's the thing: like, you changed how you saw yourself because you always like, you know, hey, I'm an attractive girl. I know. Girl. I think I, like I said, I was more willing to be more vulnerable, vulnerable around you because I felt like we like gained that spark back, and I was like, hey, I'm yours. 
here you go. You can have whatever piece of me you want. Yeah, then that was the first time. It, and at the same time, you want to conquer me, which is great. You're like, I want to conquer you, and it's all yours. I, you know what I realized? I like with like when I when we got married young, and I realized I was like withholding sex, and you felt like it was like a control thing, and it probably was. And yeah. then I realized I'm like how much power women actually have with the sex card. And then I was like, I can literally. I could literally have it's this to bullshit. my advantage. That's bullshit. <laughs> but I don't. It, it's a great gift, but it's bullshit. We talked about this on the last show when you come in and sit naked on the keyboard in the, in the office of the house. It's like, what but, power do I have? But against sometimes, this? sometimes I'll be like, oh, I can get what I want if, if if I approach it this way. But then sometimes I don't. So sometimes I feel like I'm like I come and seduce you or whatever. And then like this happened actually recently. And then like you were still kind of an asshole. I'm like. Let me get this straight. Like, I'm really crossing the line in so many ways, and you're still being rude. Yeah. And even recently, I'm sure people know about the stack, and I was so frustrated because it was it was recently you send me a stack, and then you come in the next morning, and you give me a kiss, and I was like, no, we have to ha- we get to have a conversation. You don't get to just send me your stack and think that <laughs> I forgot about the mean words you said to me. Like, no. Oh, yeah, and that was a little rough. I always have this theory, like, rough. where I ask myself, like, Danielle, how do you get what you want? And so sometimes I feel like I'm, I'm the one that's quick to not fold, but, like, just be like, I don't care. It doesn't matter anymore. Like, I love you. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. And this was, like, the one time that I felt like I'm like, okay, I, like, went across, I crossed the line. I just, oh, fuck. There went a red ball <laughs> Sorry. I'm telling you, like, I love you. It doesn't matter. And, like, I just felt like, but I just think you were kind of frustrated with work and a lot of other stuff going on. Um. Yeah. I mean, it, we, we were on vacation for, like, eight days, which. I think it was a combination like of a buying lot. our new house. Yeah, we just bought the house. Going to Mexico for going a week. Mexico, spending a lot of time together. Spending a lot of time together. Like you, but you, a lot of money. you had a meltdown like this last time we bought our house. And I was I did. like, like I, I'm still having a meltdown. You're still I just, having yeah, a meltdown? yeah, I'm still having a meltdown. When does this meltdown end? Well, let's continue to talk about why you changed how you saw yourself, and then we'll come back and we'll talk about <laughs> my fucking meltdown. Because I had a meltdown the last home we bought too. It's like it's this new level, changed, new devil. It's not that I changed how I saw myself. I changed you totally how you changed. saw me. That is bullshit. Of course you changed how I saw you, but I always thought you're hot. I think you're hot even when you got big boobs and you're pregnant. Like I like the big boobs, but <laughs> you you change yourself. So let's own the fact that you hired a trainer. You went oh, down the okay. fitness path. You became a bikini competitor. You started knowing. You, know, uh, you I thought I got, you I were think sexier. I, d- I definitely thought I, f- I felt more comfortable. Like, just, I felt more comfortable. I Being always thought, Yeah, I mean, I always felt pretty confident and comfortable, but I was like, all right, I worked pretty hard. And I think it's like, th- I was raised super conservative. We were both mm-hmm. raised Mormon, and it was like, your mom, I remember when we were dating, your mom was like, your girlfriend's wearing a bikini. I was like, yeah. Like it, and it was like a big triangle bikini. It was bikini. like a, yeah, it wasn't, it was like a super, yeah, it was like a I was trying modest. to get you to wear a thong bikini on a vacation with just you and but I. But that's what I'm saying. But like, you wouldn't do it. That, I know. And you that's what I'm saying. It. Like, then all of a sudden I was like, you know what, I want to get fit, push my comfort zones. Like, let's just see where this goes. And so I, it became like not a big deal. I was like, it's just. It's just a muscly ass. Who cares? <laughs> it's just a muscly ass. In the young kids' terminology, they call that cake. I know, but I have to be, <laughs> I have to remind myself that I have daughters because I'm like, oh, like there was this like new game certainty. And then all of a sudden, my daughter that's 14 is like, well, mom, you wore a thong. I'm like, I wore it for a bikini competition. No, 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 mom, you did fitness photos and you had underboob. I'm like, I did have underboob. I'm like, is that legal? Can I do that in photos? I mean, you did, and it was I beautiful. I thought it was fun. I, I and mean, and you did an amazing boardwalk photo shoot for me. I know, and that was actually pretty. Cl- Although most everyone on Instagram got to see it before I did, <laughs> and I was getting <laughs> okay. texts from my friends saying, "Bro, I don't know how to say this, but uh, your wife's hot, man." I'd like, no offense, right? Okay, I'm like, what, okay, what, what are you what, talking what about? So like, have you seen I the was, photos? I I'm was like, wearing what? less in my bikini shoot than I was in those boardwalks. Oh, for sure. But it, I, but, but no guy's gonna send me a message about that. It's because you had the lingerie stocking things. I know. Those Even are though you're sexy. mostly covered up. I know. But my friend that's a photographer, like she, she was the one that's like, oh my god, can we do these photos? They're so cute. And she always gives me like good pricing, and so I promote her. So I didn't. I only I posted the very conservative ones. Well, whatever they were, they worked. We got the book for them. They were amazing. And we're gonna come back to this. So you see yourself. I'm gonna tell you right now. I'm gonna tell you from the male perspective. And guys, gals out there, if you ever thought about doing the fitness thing. Do it for one simple reason, because the certainty and confidence in my wife, when you marry, I push babies out of my body. Incredible. I can never do that. Two, you have a situation of I'm a producer and I make great money. Awesome. Three, I'm already attractive, but now I'm going to do fitness and I'm going to love my body. And four, and this isn't like I eat cupcakes. I love my body. Like the fitness game is like, 
intense, like the amount of discipline for the nutrition, the oh, weightlifting, et cetera, and Danielle well, putting weight so on. What's crazy is like, I was like, oh, everyone who who I talked to is like, oh, it'll take you like three months, like you, because I lost the baby weight fairly quickly, and I was like, I want now I want to like put back on muscle, and I everyone's like, oh, it'd be good in like three months, but with 2020, everything I was trading for a bikini prep from January clear till I finally did a show in September. Oh, and you did like, amazing, and I felt like I was pretty disciplined, like with my. With my diet, my workout, because I the thing is, I'd find a show and then it get canceled. I'd find a show and then it get canceled. I mean, I had a few moments where I was like, "Fuck it, I'm not doing it anymore." And then I was like, "No, I got to do it. I've been training all year, and I finally did it, and I had I had really good results. I won in every category that I that I entered, and it was kind of like a rookie show, but I I I mean, there was like 50 girls, and I won top three in every category I I entered. So now I'm like, okay, well, I'm I'm actually training for another one this year. Um, I want to get my pro card, but I just, I don't know if I can. That's a massive commitment. I don't know if I can put on you that. You can do it. I don't but think that's I can a massive put on that size. Like, You're going to put on like 10 more pounds of I'm muscle. I'm naturally like lean. It's like hard for me to put mm. on muscle. That's lots of chicken. It's a shit ton of rice. Shit ton of rice and tilapia. <laughs> yeah. Tilapia. By the way, side note, what happened with our baby that uh, was unexpected was that our daughter eats the best of any child we've ever had. Our child also <laughs> has the best TV shows slash YouTube show she watches called Coco Melon. Between Coco Melon and her diet, she is literally better than all of her other children were I by the time they were five. chicken and rice and broccoli every day. She That's all she eats. She wants trees. She's a little tank. Trees. She does eat chicken, rice, fish, cute. broccoli, and uh, ice cream. And ice cream. She likes skinny cows. <laughs> That's my treat, okay? So you you go through so, this massive change physically yeah. in yourself. But it wasn't just, yeah. It like was I, massive internal certainty, though. Right. And I I didn't, I guess I didn't notice too big of a difference. Oh, but everybody around you noticed. Really? Oh, everybody. Well, I mean, I, f- I, mean, I feel good about it, and I'm... <laughs> I feel <laughs> great about it. it. Well, like I told you, my sex life, our sex life went to the roof. Like, this was when you were telling me you had conquered me. I mean, this is when you show up in a high heels is in a bedroom. This is the whole podcast. This is, this? is the whole fucking podcast. We're just going <laughs> oh my there. God. So, like, I'm a huge fan of the fitness game because of the confidence and certainty. But the big delivery to me, You're if I say what's the life. reward, I'm living my best fucking life is right. Like, is there was a certainty and it and and almost an edge of arrogance. Yeah. Sexual arrogance. Really <laughs> Again, you are welcome. <laughs> <laughs> that was Danielle's date night. She, she planned last week. She she texted me and said, here's what we're doing. The first, which was oh weird, 2.30 tea so, time. <laughs> I think. He I think we're going to have tea. Fucking tea. That's weird. If we're going to go have some tea. At the, you at know what? The, let's talk about date nights because we do date nights once a week. And we did these even when we didn't even like each other. Yeah. And I people. This was a quite the date night, though. It was. I just, we had tea time, which was golf tea time. Then I found a. But I had been talking to a guy from London that day. Okay. So when you so sent me the text, I'm thinking tea? we're having fucking tea time. That's weird. I've never had tea, but is it like liquored up tea? Like what kind of tea is this? <laughs> like are we, is this tea that makes you see? Are we doing we're ayahuasca gonna, we're at drink lunch? Tea. No. I just I was I literally didn't realize you meant golf. Yeah. Or tea time. No, we're golf. No, we were golfing. Yeah. And yeah. Then, it makes sense. You know, golfing instead of drinking tea, since we never do that. <laughs> <laughs> so we go golf, and then and then I found a company that does massages at your home. So I like set up like our whole master bedroom balcony, basically like opens up to like the, the best, ocean. The ocean. It looks like you're in a super sweet hotel. So then I get like massage therapists to come. Then we went to my favorite steakhouse, and then we came home. And, and you didn't bring a jacket. And they didn't bring a jacket. Yeah, because you always do that. Let's tell them about that. How well, many times? How many times would we leave to go I to think date it's a night? Thing and you don't bring a jacket. I had this really only cute to take slip my dress. jacket. I had this really cute slip dress on, and I put on a blazer that had no sleeves, but it was cuter than like a coat. But then I ended up wearing your coat, so it really defeated the purpose of the outfit. Except for the entry, the entrance into the restaurant, I looked hot. You did look hot, Sitting and then for the... about three seconds, as you sat down, realized we were all outside because of COVID, I know. and the heater was not going to be enough, and you had goosebumps all over the place. As much as I like, you know, nipples popping, that was not going to work long term. So I took my cool jacket, mm-hmm. and you took the jacket, and then I sat there with nipples popping for the rest well, of the day. Why would you wear a t-shirt? <laughs> because I had a giant, awesome coat. <laughs> <laughs> you took? <That's> great. <laughs> Why would you wear a t-shirt? Well, because you took the jacket. That's a girl thing. Just always, guys, just always have an extra backup coat. I need a backup jacket. Times. Yeah. All right. So, so date nights are date nights were happening, but date nights have changed for us because, listen, you, I wanted to plan the date last week, but no, you didn't do it. I you t- you, you I, took over. I get so bugged because guys' version of planning something is always last minute. Not true. Yes, it is. No. It's so true. So Sometimes. I, usually true. when I plan date nights, I plan them on, like, 
Monday. So my brain just knows, like, Monday, it's Monday, it's Monday. You got to plan date night. Mm -hmm. And so we usually do date night on Friday or Saturday. And it's hard to get restaurant reservations, especially with everything that's going on right now. And I'm always trying to think of something different to do. And you always wait till, if we have a date on Saturday, there's been so many times, like Friday night, I'm like, do you have a reservation somewhere? You're like, no. I'm like, do you have plans? So many and times. You're like, so many plans. Maybe, so one, many plans. maybe on one hand. But you know what? I've decided I've not that. to get irritated on the okay. small things in life. And if I want exactly <laughs> what I want, I'll just plan it and stop being irritated about it. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want you to want to plan date night, but thank you don't you. want to. And when you do, it's something weird. And I'm always like, I Listen, don't want to do that. Here's the thing. Like, buying you gifts, which was part of your love language, didn't work out so well because I didn't really know what to get. So then I would get stuff you wouldn't be happy. So then you'd no, take it back. So then you gave me a list now of that, what stuff no, to get. we had this conversation. Is I'm like, you would always try to buy me, last minute me, something. Yeah, I did. You'd literally, like, go to the mall, like, Christmas Eve and buy whatever shoes. It was kind of a status thing for me. I don't know why. No, it was a lack of preparation and yeah. laziness. True. Yeah. But... I finally was like, babe, I need you to stop going to, like, you need to plan ahead. And I was like, I'll never say no to diamonds. 2020, I did well. So you you slowly, now I feel like um, birthdays and holidays, like, yeah. you'll get me, like, a nice piece of jewelry or whatever. And we it took 20 ha years. have a jewelry guy. And and it's fine. But you know it's my favorite? And you actually haven't been, you're not like this anymore. But oh. the grudgingly gifts. Ooh, Whoa, that shit. moves. <laughs> you just you just did that. Did you see that? The table the table just got a heart on went straight up in the air. <laughs> you you must have said something right there. I was like, yeah. The grudgingly gifts? Yes. Yeah, so I don't do that so much anymore. You don't. The the last time you Explain did that. Explain to him the grudgingly gifts. The last time you did that was actually last Valentine's. And no, we it wasn't were, last. It was two Valentines ago. Two Valentines ago, we were at. You were the, pregnant. No, I wasn't pregnant. It was before you got pregnant. No, I was not. Just going what up is right going now? on? Stop. Push it down. I wasn't. Right. I wasn't pregnant. It was. It was. Last we were doing a date your wife podcast when I got you there. No, that's not what I'm talking about. Is oh, last, I did it twice. Uh, yes, we were in the Dior oh. store. Oh, and yeah. I like you hadn't that was got a year ago. you got me some like mm -hmm. cute lingerie. But let's be real, that lingerie is a gift for you, not necessarily a gift for me. So then we go True. into the Dior store, and I'm like looking at some shoes, and your energy was so <laughs> weird, and you were like, ah, and I was like, <laughs> gosh, I get him, and you're like, I mean, I mean, you have a lot of shoes. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, uh, I'll take two pairs of those ones and those ones. Oh, you're such I'll a take, bitch, too, I'll because later we find out. And then I was like, I mean that in all the best ways. And, way. then, I was and like, then you tell me later. You, no, late, no, I go, do you want, I can use my card. Do you want me at the register? And you then, which even pissed you off even more, because you're like, no, 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 babe, it's Valentine's Day. I got them. I'm like, both pairs? Are you sure? Should I grab another? <laughs> you're kidding me? You did that to me in Mexico with the tequila, I know, too. I know. You like, so you cornered me in the well, situation. Don't act like an asshole. <laughs> And I won't treat you like an <laughs> asshole. <laughs> so she only, she didn't even want the other pair. She literally just said both pairs because she wanted to stick it to me. I've only worn them once. I don't Yeah, like well, them. I don't know any shoes you wear more than once. I wear them a lot. Some of your shoes. Most of your shoes you wear But once. I was like, I, cause the reason I was so bugged is because this was after Isla was born. And I felt yeah. like we had, like, I hate it when I feel like we've come really far with a lot of things. And then something. I regress. We, we, yeah. And I'm yeah. like. I mean, I'm sure I do the same thing, but that was like one moment that I was like, oh, really? Okay. That was my moment of regression. Yeah. I did regress. I, I yeah, I was feeling, uh, I was feeling, you know, I was feeling sorry. It, it is what happens, right? So part of the struggle from my mind forever has been pouring money into my wife and my family into our things like this is a investment, Waste. right? So part of my mind is, what is our ROI on this? So my mind like does some weird math. It starts calculating how many shoes I know are in the closet how many she doesn't wear. I'm looking at the shoes. I'm thinking she's going to wear these one time. Take a picture of them on Instagram. My mind does that same Bam. thing. I start calculating two the Lambo shoes payment gone and other you? surfboard pay. And I'm like, hmm. Surfboards. That was a bad example. Okay, surfboards are the cheapest but, sport but, in the world. Okay, technology Only shit. Only thing cheaper is rubber band collections. Car payments. And I'm like, Okay, if we put this in perspective, and I think I, when you do look at things in perspective, I'm like, hey, like you pay this much for your car. Like we go Valentine's is once a year. We go on yeah. like three vacations a year. Like because I think it's hard, and maybe it's hard for a lot of men to like spend money on like certain things. But you have to, you have to like, if you go into it with weird energy, then women feel kind of guilty and are like, no, I don't need, it. I don't need it, yeah. but I really want it, and then it kind of like fucks up the whole experience. It made it worse. It was like, it, it so might you have like, to look at yeah, things like bad. that with perspective, whether it's gifts or vacations or whatever. It is like 
you have to like where where else are you spending money where you're like i have no issue at, like spending money on this but then something that means a lot to my family that means a lot to my wife that only happens two to three times a year if you look at what you spend on that versus what you're spending on something that you don't put two seconds of a thought into it you're kind of like oh okay well maybe maybe i can cross the line and maybe i need to like let go of this weird energy the only thing with the two is like, I mean, I mean it's like done that, with the story change, right? Well, you, well, you're talking about me and how, how did you like level up with sex and all this stuff? And I'm like, yeah, I had to like tell myself like, this is important to my husband. And in so like, I started to enjoy it too. Right. Yeah. And so I, I did that with jewelry. Yeah. Well, I'm just saying like, it did take me almost 20 years to get there. Ways. It goes both ways. So you're like, how did you get there specifically stop in the beginning of the show? Like sexually. And I was just like, I just like submitted. I was like, okay. And then like the more I submitted, the more I was like, this is fucking awesome. So I don't know if you feel that way buying, if you like buying me gifts I do. or. I do. I mean, I think you realize like the exchange. Well, is... it, the exchange is valuable, right? I mean, it's like a, we've <laughs> talked about it before, like our contract we made back in the day that was like our indecent proposal. But you know what else I was even thinking? Like, I remember huh. when we first started this podcast and we started a show, we called it Quickie Quickie Porn Star. Oh, Quickie Quickie. We don't even do that star. anymore. It's just always. It's pretty much porn star, porn star, <laughs> porn star. <laughs> 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 Because that sounds cheap. It's just like. Well, that just, was coming from your own analogy. I know. Quickie, but, quickie even, porn but, star. but even that, like, it was funny then. Go back and find that episode. I think it's That titled. is actually interesting because when you tried Quickie, Quickie porn star, it was a revolutionary show. It was. But and now I even like, think what? back and I'm like, no, it's always mm, good. It's not just really. Like, it's, just, it's always kind of like porn star, porn star, porn star, but it's not. Uh, I think what I think what we're saying I think what we meant by porn star is like there's intimate connection. Yeah, with it. yeah, it's like yeah. fun. It's like yeah. That's kind of like saying jumbo shrimp though, because you have like <laughs> intimate connection and porn star, and you're like that probably doesn't go together. No, that's all right. This is a good analogy. We're rolling with it. So here, here is a piece that we're going to add from the the framework of the five for the show today. So the the piece, the jump that we made in 2017 was a jump from <laughs> step stage number three in the five stage of relationship seduction. Again, to strangulation, to suffocation, right? So if you have you haven't looked at it at divorceyourwife.com, you can check that video out over there where I walk through these five stages, about an hour-long video. I think it'll be really useful to you. The, the jump for us was across the void, which was divorce our storylines, divorce ourselves as individuals to make it to the submission phase. Because that's what you just said. You said you submitted. And I, I had to submit too. Right there. Here's the thing. I if I had it my way, I, I would have I would have fought to get what you want. You know what I mean? Yeah, I would have fought to to be just really good, but it was weird. Like with money, because like money for me was a weird thing growing up. I didn't have like there was any pursuit for it. And Danielle's been like my trigger to keep pushing, 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 and it became a it's game. It's not even for about me. money. It's about growth, though. And yeah. I think that money is the tool that you that is a result of your growth. But I, I didn't see that growing. I didn't see that in the beginning of our relationship, right? So I felt used, and I felt like, oh, my God, I'm an ATM machine. But I actually came to terms with that. I was like, at a certain level, I am an ATM machine. And what's wrong with that, right? At a certain level, you were I like— I think that women want to be taken care of, but I'm pretty um, independent. Like, I always—I never wanted— You're very established now. Well, but even in the very beginning when we were married, I was like, I will always work. I'm like, but it wasn't even that I had to work. I hated the idea of, like, having somebody tell me, like, you can spend money on this. You can't spend money on that. Like— I wanted to be able to, I, like, I was just very independent. I was like, no, like, I want to be able to contribute. I want to be able to, like, mm -hmm. purchase things. Obviously, I wouldn't purchase things if it put our family at risk and things like that. But I wanted to be able to, like, not feel, I, I wanted to keep my independence, I guess you yeah. could say. That's hard for some women. <clears throat> that's keep... hard for some, no, it's hard for, like, stay-at-home moms and other individuals who just don't, either they have a storyline want to go or they don't. I watch guys control women like crazy like this. Uh, where they have to check with them on everything. Like, I don't think I would have a problem with it now. Like even if I, even if I didn't work now, I don't think I would have as much of a problem, especially because we have kids and managing the home, and and like that's that's a full time that's mm -hmm. a full time thing. Yeah. So I don't think I would have like the same feelings of like oh I can't spend this and this. Like obviously I wouldn't spend things that puts our family in jeopardy or anything like that. But I think at a, like again getting married at a young age and not having kids, I was like I'll always work. I want like that's just part of who I am. Yeah, you spent some money here in the last 24 hours. I did? On two things. What did I spend? Two items. What did I buy? Two assets. What? Two assets. What are you talking about? Oh, you know. One deals <laughs> with building your assets, and the other deals with jumping with your assets. 
Oh, I bought a trampoline. Yes, we did, ladies and gentlemen. A <laughs> oh tramp a fucking lean. This podcast is weird. No, it's it not weird like at all. It's all over the place. And it's not all over the place at all. People are definitely following this. You're just not. That's weird because you're the co host. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm trying to circle this back no, around. No, no, no. I've Usually... circled this around every time. God, we're, we, were, we're going we rusty? Forward. Are we a little rusty at our podcast? Not rusty at all. Okay. Not rusty. You told them how good we are in a sex game now. So, anyways, the trampoline. <laughs> Was a big purchase. You also purchased a Smith machine. I know. I'm turning my downstairs into like a jungle gym. It's going to be great. I'm like, yeah, warm it's a up giant on the trampoline, and then I'm going to go over and lift some weights. Yeah. And... Well, our daughter jumps on her, her little bouncy house, and she's falling in love with jumping, and she's the only kid that hasn't had a trampoline. So we finally yeah. have a yard that we can make a trampoline happen. Oh, cute. So this this whole process, let's bring some point to this whole fucking show. Like the show has two <laughs> points, right? Like, point yeah. number one is this in order for you to grow, you're going to have to let go. So we're going to say this every single time. One of the best ways to let go and grow is inside the Wake Up Warrior Challenge. We have one of those happening every two weeks. We have a new challenge starting. We're here right now at the time we're recording this show. Challenge number nine is currently underway. Challenge number 10 is currently taking seats. We'd love to have you part of that. About five to 600 individuals, men and women, join us in the Wake Up Warrior Challenge every two weeks. We're going to teach you the art and science of the Warrior's way to having it all, which ultimately is the science to put our relationship back together, as well as thousands of other couples just like you. You can check that out at wakeupwarriorchallenge.com. Now, we have another piece we talked about, DivorceYourWife.com, where's that free video series I told you about. And that video series is ultimately going to walk through the five stages of relationship. Again, seduction, which we're kind of entering back into. Seduction, suffocation, or stuck in a strangulation, suffocation, submission, and salvation. Check that out if you want to learn more about that process. But our message for today is really, really simple, is that you are going to have to change. So what's, what's, the, what's the secret sauce? Of change? Yeah. The worries way to have it all. <laughs> so there you go. It's in a literal sign. We don't have to give you some meme or some Instagram post and tell you change, be better. Nope. Just go to wakeaboardchallenge.com. But what can you do today? Well, we can have a conversation around date night, which is this. If you have something you want to do on date night, then schedule it. Are you going to schedule that? I have a lot of things I want to do on date night. You reject all of them. One of which is shooting guns. <laughs> And you never want to do it. We went and did that one time, and I was like, "That's I don't like I that. I wanted to bungee jump. You said no. I went bungee jumping on our first date, and I'm terrified of heights. That's and how much you, I liked you. No, well, that is like, that's called false pretense. Yeah. You did well. the first date, you jumped, and now 20 years later, no jumping. All right, well, listen, somebody planned the date this you week. You know what? You know what's Get so funny? Get your date. Is, <laughs> what, was, what were they talking about in church yesterday? The... Um, uh, a lot of stuff that pastor's really good. A lot of stuff, but I was like, I looked at you and I'm like, babe, you're my, what What was the word he was saying? Um, um, uh, I'm the, I'm the go guy. No. Yeah, I I'm the remember. go guy and you're the thinker. No, but like he was like, oh, never mind. You need somebody who's like, you should look at your notes. Okay. Do you have notes? No, I don't. But like, <laughs> we start going back to church and every week I'm like, that's so good. And like, I usually write half of it down and then. Yeah, it was really forget, good. It was really good. We're going okay. to church here in Orange County. If you're in Orange County, check it out. Oceans Church. Uh, really loving it. Pastor Mark's amazing, and we're having a great time there. So, you have a wonderful week. We're proud of ourselves. This is episode number two. Uh, we're gonna come it's kind of all over the place. Yeah, it's all but, over. We, um, need, we need some more reps. We literally, I was literally in the mid- middle of a team meeting, and I was like, the podcast studio is right there. We don't have one for this week, and we missed one last week. We said we're going to do it. We got to do are. it. So, all right, have hope a great you guys week, found guys. some value in this, and we'll see you guys e- hopefully every week. We'll see you next week. We'll we may never week. see you, but you will see us. You will see us. Or you'll hear us. <laughs> we may never hear you, but you'll hear us. Either way, have a great week. Get on your date nights. <laughs> and, we'll uh, see you next week. <laughs> we'll see you next, next week. Next week. Yeah. Ciao. Sayonara. See you later.